the same time, you're a really good hero at getting ruptured because you can just stand there. That's and true. Be like, Come at me, you know. Um, and the thing that I criticized Five Rat for in the game that they lost, this game they have plenty of it once again. They have great ways of starting fights. They have good lanes. They have stuns. A great backline sniper game. They have ways of taking objectives with Dragon Knight and DP. Their heroes play great in pairs. They play great in five man. On the other side of the coin, you've got Felt, who are once again going to be running a Beastmaster into a sniper lane, which I think is going to be hard. Um, I guess the support matchup this time is a little bit better because you have the Rubik against uh, Tusk for that lane, so perhaps that will change the matchup a decent amount. Um, but I think, from my perspective, there's a lot riding on kits this game. I think the Ember needs to pop off. He needs to snowball uh, so that Bloodseeker can be brought into the game that way. Ember needs to deal the initial damage to enable Thirst to become a factor. Right. Because the problem is... Beastmaster doesn't deal that much damage unless he has a good lane. And we think he's not going to have that. Treant deals some of the worst damage in the whole game. So he's not going to enable Thirst. And Rubik is very contingent on stealing a good spell to deal a lot of damage. Where There's a couple here. There's Shrapnel, which is really good on Rubik. Hoodwink's kit is decent. Um, but nothing that like really stands out where you're like, boom, when Rubik gets this, that's when Thirst starts rolling. So, yeah. We'll see. I'm a... Uh, I'll give very good odds to Firat in this game personally, especially also coming in with the momentum from that last game, right? So, okay. I, I'm a believer. Hey, it's kind of like if he just gave up automatically when he saw Beastmaster versus Sniper, he was just like, yeah, this is done. I, I'm very curious about that support dynamic, how much it changes it. But. Yeah. We'll see very, very soon. So, well, Fade obviously had a good game one, had a terrible game two, and well, game three is still a question mark, but we're going to find out. I think ironically, so... From what I understand, Fade is mainly known for the summon heroes. I think, ironically, all of his worst games that I've seen are in those. Like, I didn't all, the, say that all the games that he's played, the other heroes have been his best performances since I got here, right? I, I can't speak from every series. I haven't seen every series that Felt has played this season and how much they played in Div 2, etc. I haven't seen all their games, but... Uh, I found him to be more impressive on the other heroes, and I think part of it is that those other heroes are quote-unquote safer in terms of laning for how they've played, right? Right. Is that he hasn't had to play from a massive deficit when he's played these other heroes. The lanes have actually just gone fine, and he's been able to showcase what he can do. To be fair, it's very hard to look bad on Beastmaster if you lose your lane. Like, this hero, you can't really shine on it if you fall massively behind, so if they're not drafting it, knowing how to ensure that it has a good game. I think they're better off just shelving it for a bit and, and running other stuff, right? Uh, but we'll see. We'll see if this time around if the lane's going to go better for him than it did last time. It's necessary. Oh, we're going to have another pause. Uh, Lodine still, you know, having settings? issues. Settings? Oh, that's new. What settings could you, could you possibly need to change on a train protector is my question. Oh, there's Bloodseeker pausing, right? Is it? He needs a new hotkey so that he can click Thirst, which is his only <laughs> skilled ability. Um, I mean, he must be planning to get the new, uh, the Ags, right? The Blood Mint. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot think of a worse reason to pause than I don't have a hotkey for an item I will never buy in this game. I wonder what the pickup rate of that item is on Bloodseeker. It's got to be zero. It's got to be sub 1% in Pro Dota for sure. In Pro Dota, it has to be zero. It's been picked before. Really? Yeah. Who did that? Maybe they got it from Roche. I mean, <laughs> I even, even if Roche <laughs> gave me the X, I just delete it. It'd just be like, yeah, no, thank you. Bloodseeker might try to find a way to sell it. <laughs> yeah. You can sell cheese for 500. What do you think you should be able to sell Aghanim Synth for? <laughs> oh, it's just ridiculous. Like, it drains 7% of your HP. Like, I mean, it got changed, right? It went from, like, doing self-pure damage to self-magic damage, so you can, oh, like, cool. itemize around it. Um, Top lane. Okay. That is yep. that is not the start that the Beastmaster lane needs. Is not that his support dies minute one. Yeah. Great yeah. head start once again now for 5-rat in this safe lane. And I do think, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the pick order, the Beastmaster was picked before Sniper, and then they were probably planning on banning Sniper's second phase, but Five Red just recognized that this is such a big counter for them that they were willing to first phase Sniper into banning Sniper solutions. Oh, bottom lane. Acorn shot, moves. He'll be able to secure the kill onto Al Albino Zebra. Giant yeah. immediately handing the tip over. Uh, I, 
I'll, maybe, be, I'll be honest with you. I just don't think this lane is good. I don't think Treant Bloodseeker is a strong lane because what Treant likes to play with, in my experience, in the safe lane is heroes that can connect with his aggression and do damage, right? And sure, Bloodseeker can offer a bit of a blood right, but he can't really go and connect and hit the target compared to, say, any sort of range carry like Drow or a melee carry with a gap closer, like, you know, whatever you kind of name it, right? Uh, with Bloodseeker, every time Albino Zebra tries to play offensive, they're just going to kill Giant. him. Giant. You know? Run, Giant. You just tipped. You can't die now. Oh, no. Oh, he's dead. All right. That's very important for Fade. It certainly is. That almost unlocks his Helm of Iron Will if he wants to grab that first here. Uh, but he might go for the Mana Boots before that, I would imagine. Um, but yeah, Albino Zebra, just short version, is he has to be very careful bottom. Because every time he shows in the trees, he can get bushwhacked into Dragon Tail, into Acorn Shot. And even if he doesn't die, that's still like a good 500 damage, and then they can just do it again. I, I just love how much these pause fives hate each other. Like reminder that uh you know <laughs> Albino was kicked for giant for the for the side of five rad so you know bit of bad blood here between these pos fives. They could also just be joking around, but for the sake of hyping the uh, game up, hit immune is actually in trouble here potentially. Oh. Nice sidestep. That very nice sidestep indeed. Right. Misses the bushwhack. Good play. The thing is though, like if you're this blood seeker, uh, chances are you're not going to get any far. Like this is a pretty hard lane. I mean, so far, definitely. How much CS? He's got 12. His net worth is atrocious. So Speed has got 18 and one assist. Why is Bloodseeker's net worth this bad? What happened on the bounty room? He bought a salve, at least. Okay, so that's mine's 100. Well, the bounty rooms were like two for two, right? No, that was three for one as well. Okay. Okay, yeah. Top lane. They're gonna lose Solji again here on the on the Rubik. So DNM, that's his second kill of the game already on this sniper, and it's it's not like he wasn't already farming pretty well on the sniper as it was. So two kills the way of him, Solji. F Fade's actually got to be careful here. Well, they have tag team up now, Giant. They have a creep wave to tank, but it doesn't seem like they're gonna go for the dive in. Thing is, though, Kits is rotated now, dragging a creep wave of his own. <laughs> oh yeah, this happens all the time. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a random Ember just showing up with the way I. I mean, Giant would have seen that coming the whole way because he was the wave was following him. I just think he was just mentally checked out. Like, what the hell just happened? You I know, just, just a random Ember showing up with a creep wave in his back. That's a weird one. That that one was very strange. All right. I mean, he, he gets the kill. He farms the creep yeah. while he's at it. I mean, that's efficiency. It worked out. And Kits is having a really good time, but so is Red too. The thing is with the DP as well, like you hit these timings and you just start snowballing out of control. Especially like just these T1 towers, once you hit those level six, they're just not going to last with the draft. In fact, bottom lane, hit immune. He's going to get caught out of the Bloodseeker. Oh, he missed the trick. Oh. I think that, didn't that miss? I, it, oh, it was Raindrop. Okay, okay, okay. I thought he missed the Breathe Fire yeah. point blank, but yeah, that was a Raindrop there. Yeah, this laning stage is looking very 5 ready so far, you got to say. I mean, all three lanes are doing very well. Mid lane, probably the one that had the most potential to do better, but still solid. Uh, red 2, obviously, 36 and 4 to the 30 and 4 of Ember, and this is a DP favorite matchup, so... I don't know, I would probably call this relative to potential maybe a slight loss for Red, but overall with how the game is going, this is completely fine. Just probably not too worried. Illusion Room will be grabbed here by Kits. No, nope, Red. close call, but we'll get it. We'll be able to run it away. The Giant is waiting. Problem is now Giant's in trouble. Kits, gonna stick around though, but has remnants available, so can always get out surely. Though He's Moose is now careful. waiting for yeah. the high ground. Kits, still trying for the kill, will go the remnant the other way, realizing Moose was waiting, finds a courier of giant, <laughs> and he's all right. That was cute, that was a cool play. First of all, he gets away, but then it gets a little bit of a, a <laughs> snack on the way out. DNM is just abusing fate up here, just non-stop, relentlessly hitting him. He has the morbid mask, so can take the harassment from the boars and just trade it straight back. And Fade did go for the arcane boots first, which means he has no sustainability in the lane except the living armor. And here we go. But that's not going to cut it against this. No, no, it certainly it's a won't. again. Bye-bye, Fade. DNM, third kill of the game here on the sniper. Though Solji, nice little rotation. We'll pick off the sniper. But I mean, you've just got to... I mean, I don't, I don't know about that tip. 
I don't know what that does for you. <laughs> I mean, uh, I think DNF's more than happy right now. No, oh, three to five, two K advantage the uh, the way of five rat. All three cores on the side of five rat are the top of the CS board right now. Oh my god! I just realized this bottom lane they have twenty denies. That's a lot of denies. Dragon Knight has eleven. The Hoodwink has ten now. They have the same amount of denies almost as Bloodseeker has CS. He's got twenty-seven. And this is why I always say Bloodseeker is not a very good hero. He has his games. I think this hero is actually very, very good sometimes. But again, the pairing with Trian against these two, I just don't think that lane's very good. And Soldi. They've been exploited for sure. Nice, nice little timing. Deny. They could farm this maybe with Exo, with Hoodwink, with Sniper coming over with Shrapnels. Okay, if they steal all of this, I just, I have very little hope for this Beastmaster in this game. You like, just tap out. You cannot give this up. The team has to help Kits. His flame guard just ran out, but you can't just let them take this. Oh, kids, he's been bushwhacked immediately. Oh, no, this is, oh boy. It's oh. getting worse and All right. Okay, I mean, this could have been worse. They could have also got the stack. Now they only got kits and, and one of the two stacks. <laughs> Look, there's a, there's a troll summon left. There you go. Oh, level six. Yay! And like you said, the ancients are still there. Fade, he'll just farm them immediately. I mean, the, the thing is, I think Fade now just won't stack them again. He's just like, you know, chances are they're just going to come steal these. I'll take them now and just leave it be. Yeah. There's nothing better to do right now anyway, so it's fine. Moves with a haste, being annoying. Uh, this is the worst start we've seen Hidden Moon have, by the way, uh, in the series. Maybe in the DPC, actually. Um, and he's a pretty integral part of when this team is winning its games. I think he's been probably on average the standout player for me for this team in their games, uh, probably together with Kits. And, well, neither of them is having a particularly great start right now. And the issue is this map is going to shrink relatively fast. The bottom tower is going to fall to Dragon Knight pretty quickly. The Death Prophet ulti should make quick work of mid afterwards if they just combine their heroes. And then the question becomes, how do Felt activate their lineup, right? Like, who do you play around? Do you play around the Ember? Do you play around the Beastmaster? DNM? That's yeah. a big one. He has Mask of Madness. He's running. Sniper Kits. is known to be exceptionally fast. I mean, K Kits doesn't have chains anyway. Yeah, he couldn't there's, have got him. There's no way. You, you're relying on Soldier to just close the gap with the lift. There's, it's just not going to happen. Yeah, this bot tower is gone. Living armor will be used again, but it cannot sustain against the damage Dragon Knight brings. And obviously the damage component, I think corrosive breath's damage is not physical type, right? You know this. Uh, but do I? I'm pretty, I think it's magical. Yeah, it should count as magical against tower. All right, nice deny at least, but yep, they don't give him a high five. They give him a tip though. Why not? All right, well, it looks like Hidemune will actually trade for the top tier one, so that's something, but once again, the, the disadvantage is just severe. 4K gold minute 10 with this type of lineup. It's a, it's a hill to climb, let's put it that way. And I, I, I love this from Fyrat. Just go next tower, you know, like keep keep the pressure up. Use the DP exorcism, use the advantage that you have. I think Dragon Knight needs to rotate over for this to become a, a true success, though. Um, does he have a dagger? No, he went meteor hammer. Oh, yeah, he did. Since yeah, I don't know about that though, but yeah, whatever. I feel like that's a little bit overkill on DK. I'd rather have a fast blink so you can just set up your team for success. But you know what? I feel like at this point the advantage is significant enough. Nice catch there. It certainly was. He is dead. He certainly is. You know what, Cinderin? If you watched Game Leap, you'd know DK meteor hammer is a thing, but you don't. That's correct. I don't watch Game Leap. How embarrassing. Speed? I don't know if that's embarrassing. <laughs> speed. T1 mid tower. We like to give a few shout outs to for speed's sake, you know? Yeah, I'm I'm cool with that. <clears throat> I just don't want to be called embarrassing. <laughs> mid lane. Yeah. Well should have watched Game Leap because you lost your tower and your Rubik. <laughs> and there's a guide on how to deal with Dragon Knight Meteor Hammer. <laughs> should have watched it. Oh. Well this is uh this you hate to say it, but this might actually be turning in even stompier to, than the previous two games. Yeah. Like, this this series has not had any competitive games. And if this continues, that trend will just be the end of the day. Like, absolutely nothing is going the way of felt right now. They have to find some sort of a team-organized move. 
Sounds is going to be dodged by Kits very nicely. He might get a kill on Moose for that. Oh, he's trying with the snowballs chasing him oh, down. Remnant forward. Oh boy, Kits. he actually used everything and he didn't get him. Kits, it's just a hoodwink. He's dead now. There's uh, no Kits, escape now. Kits looks a little bit tilted. Oh boy. I that, that that's yeah yeah okay. Hand the tip over. It's deserved. I think Kits is a little bit upset. Yeah. All right, he said good game in team chat. Oh, that's it's over. That's not an official GG. I bet it's over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his, his net worth is uh, quite pitiful right now. I I'm trying to look at silver linings for the Radiant lineup, but the issue is the one silver lining they had was if Ember has a good game, they can play around him, but he doesn't. So there's nobody thriving. Uh, usually under these circumstances, if the Ember was having a good time, they could make like smoke moves with Ember Rubik. They could bring the Beastmaster into them to enable him. Bloodseeker could maybe s snowball a little bit with some thirst damage coming in from all of those moves they were making together. But as it stands right now, it's kind of like you're trying to you're trying to make a cake, but you're lacking the flour. You know, like there's like some key ingredient that's missing, and you just can't even get off the ground with your recipe, right? Like, that's just. I mean, they could be gluten free. They could. Uh, it was a metaphor. You get it, okay? Mike, you understand what I'm going with this. I knew you were going to say something stupid like that. Okay, it's like you're trying to make eggs in the pan, but you don't have any heat, okay? There you go. Okay. Hey, you could just eat the eggs raw. Yeah, you could, but then they're not cooked. I was going to say you could be vegan. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sure. All right, let me spell it out if you want. No, I'm not going there. I'm not going to give you another example. You have not earned that. You don't deserve it. Thank you for that, Cindric. Yeah, you're very welcome. <laughs> Phil, I, the, you're kind of grasping at straws now. Like, it's 3 to 10, 6k advantage. Five Red have got the exact start they could have asked. All right, there's a roar. There is a roar. Nice However, Dragon Tail interception. There's follow, and now the snowball. He's fine. And he he's not is fine. Not hit and immune, though. Yeah, exactly. He's not fine. No. Albino Zebra is fine. This boar. Also fine. All right, Rubik, there's the combo. Ah, uh, he's gone. Wobble combo. <laughs> so rough. <laughs> oh, what yeah. do you do now? Like, this kind of draft that we from Felt, you know, it just, you fall apart after the landing stage, it's all over. Like, I never see a Bloodseeker come back, ever. I do, but it's not with these conditions. If the other cores are doing well, Bloodseeker can actually recover quite well because he inherently has, you know, a steroid that is dependent on the team's success, right? So if the team overall is doing well, Thirst can all of a sudden unlock you and you can get a great team fight, you can clean house and suddenly your hero is activated. But the problem is there's nobody in this game that's going to get the enemy team low to begin with. If Ember isn't... When he gets his Maelstrom, it's going to get a little bit better because there's going to be some more spread damage and the Thirst will start ramping up, but... Yep, there's still, there's like a mountain to climb. I'm, I'm curious why Red 2 didn't go mech this game. I know he's playing a mid DP, but I think Greaves against this lineup would have still been great. But at the end of the day, it probably doesn't really matter uh, with how this game's going, that they don't have it. Um, mid DPs, it, it's not that mid DPs have to go mech and they don't usually. Honestly, I think this is a pretty standard build going Kai Assange. I'm just looking at like the game state and what he's up against, the mech would be incredibly valuable for his team to have. Um, but yeah, I think they can all do very individualistic item builds. When all of your cores are trashing the opponent team like this, you can kind of buy whatever you want that makes you happy. And that's what they're going to do. How much damage does a Dragonite actually do? If you Dragon Tail into Hammer into Fireball. It's a lot. Can you kill a support? You probably can, right? I'm almost sure Roar you onto can. Moose. Okay, they got him. They got him. That's a kill for Fade. Happy days. That is their first kill since the dawn of time. Let's see. Uh, they got a kill. Mm, minute seven. Oh, so it's been uh, eight minutes. It's Wait, been nine minutes. It's been nine minutes. I've done the math wrong, haven't I? No, you didn't account for uh, summertime. Oh, thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Good save. Yep. All right, four to thirteen. I mean, it seems like Fire Red are going to start moving in as Meteor Hammer. Oh, he, yeah, seat. he. That, that was a fortunate slide. He was obviously trying to be quick about it, like blink Dragon Tail into Hammer, but he slided at the exact same time, so the the Dragon Tail didn't even go out. Yeah, but Roshan's up. It is, and they're going to go straight for it. DP Exo. They have Tusk Tag Team Level Two. Sniper with Mask of Madness is going to do a lot of damage with that tag team. It's very high attack speed and. 
yeah, this will be a gimme for 5-Rat. Put the Aegis onto DNM. And probably... I wonder, I wonder what they're thinking like internally right now, what their team comms are. If it's like, all right, guys, you know, just step by step, what's the next plan? You know, just stick to some sort of raw logic for how you're going to play the game out. I wonder what the next move is. Is it bottom tier two? Is it mid tier two? Is it, okay, we want to look for a pickoff first. We want to take control of this area. Because sometimes a game is just flowing that well that it feels like they could choose whatever objective they want and that's the next one. Quite literally. I, I genuinely think they could attack any tower or they could attack any region on the map and they would just win it. They would just grab it. So the most important thing is to lay out a plan of what's the best what's the best plan of attack? What do you what do you do to keep the advantage flowing? And oh, Kit's nice quelling blade there in the mid lane. Will not get caught, but he will get caught. Oh no it was fake. My bad drinking Mirana emoji. Yeah, I mean, I don't blame him for that. It's uh, it's one it's of those a, games. It's a good emoji. It certainly is. It's good anime. Yeah. It's, um, that was one of the scenes in that. That was very relatable. Don't spoil it. Nope. There was no anime, guys. <laughs> Fire frat. I mean, like you said, they pretty much got any objective they want that they could take, right? Like, there's literally nothing stopping them. Is that Albino? Albino Zebra's gonna stop them in the river. He is, with his face. We'll go down. Giant. He's gonna see Solji here on the low ground. Shards will just kind of block him in, though he does still manage to walk around, but now you've got the snowball. And you'll have a Warriors Punch to follow. You do have Hidden Mune moving in, though. So Solji does go down. Giant will simply TP out. Well, that's very good. It is. It is very good. Getting that kill, getting out, no casualties, having rupture used. Not fade. Moose is going to kill himself a little boar, a little uh, nice nice dinner. Little known fact about squirrels, they actually eat boars. What? Um, yeah. Why do you know that? <laughs> I don't have a good answer for this. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Like, what kind of reaction is that? That they, they legit eat boars? Yes, absolutely. Wow. Yeah. It's nuts. <laughs> Stop Albino Zebra has a dagger. He's going to get out. But this tower... All right, so this was the next game plan, right? Get a get the pressure out bottom, take bottom tier two tower. They're going to try to delay it with living armor, but... So we'll go the way of speed and the gang. That tier two tower not going to last. Good old game leap advice. Make sure you get the bot tier two tower. And absolutely. don't forget to snag the outpost giant. There we go. Oh, hold on a minute. Now you're taking away the subs here from speed. Let's take it easy. Don't offer too many tips. That's true. Make sure you watch his videos on how to get the outpost. <laughs> <laughs> Kits is going to walk up mid here into speed. There's the stun into fireball into... Oh. Yeah. I thought he was going to hammer, but he was too cool for that. Unnecessary this time, right? Yeah, he had moves on backup. Yeah. Red. Oh, I mean, they're just going to pass tips along. I... Kits knows, like, th this game is feeling very impossible right now. He's he's trying to... There's immune, the Meteor Hammer. Stun into stun. Into stun. Absolutely. Oh, wow. Where's that damage, though? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there it is. Lacking. Hello. Bye-bye. 4 to 18 now, Sindarin. Uh, yep. Two we're, more. Two we're, to go. We're back into that territory. Yep. Happy days. Time to time for some sick ripping soon. Absolutely. Oh, no. Moose. Get out of the rules! <laughs> Most no. Oh, oh no. That's unfortunate. Well, if you're a if you're a good blunt enjoyer in chat, this is not the game for you. <laughs> this was not the one. No. But it was close. Next time, boys. You could almost feel it in your bones, but not quite. Kids cam on. I mean, kids doesn't want the cam on, right? I think oh, kids no. is very upset. Kids may have punched the camera. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he Does may... he seem like the kind of guy who would do that? He seems kind of calm to me. He's a mid-player, Cinder, and they're never calm. That is a good counter-argument, and I agree. You used to be a mid-player once. I did. And then uh, I was too calm for it. Yeah, you were. Yeah. Too calm with losing, that is. Yeah. Kits? That. Wait. <laughs> uh, Kits is going to kill the wave. And, okay, get out. Well, the pressure is mounting, I think. I think Five Rat should just take over the enemy ancient area entirely now. I think they can just hog it, place a ward, 
uh, keep farming it with the sniper and get the top tier two tower potentially. I think I mean mid tier two is also an option. It's it's completely fine like whichever one they prefer. But their Aegis is expiring now, so it might be safer to just play the map a little bit if they want and wait for the next key item. Uh, DNM is how far away is from Satanic? About two k, give or take, a little bit more. Oh, they oh found boy! Him again. Yeah. Well, did he has he, a BKB. Did he not hammer? I uh, I believe he may have accidentally cancelled it. Actually, he used it. I saw him channeling it. Yeah. I just can't remember if it it didn't land in time or if he just cancelled. It it will connect. He has level four stun. So if he stuns into instant hammer, it does fully chain. Moose? I watched that a video about that on Game Leap. <laughs> Moose is gonna run away here. <laughs> he certainly and is. And he might just make no. nothing. Nothing. But well, top tier two tower will be the trade off, so I think that's pretty good for the side of five rat. Still tier two tower going down. Five rat still very, very comfortable, even if they're losing their supports as now they'll rotate. You know what I've been wondering? Is DNM, do you know what it stands for? No. Because the, the thing I think every time I see his nickname is Denim. Denim? Know? Yeah, it's like... Like people, the jeans. Yeah, it's like when people have a nickname and you take out the vowels, right? That's right. That's like a, a common thing and like also in like design or whatever. That's the only thing I could ever make out of his name is that... Fun fact, my first uh, actual tournament cast was Echo League, which is an amateur league back mm -hmm. in the day, uh, and he was there playing in that amateur league. So I was casting him back then, but... In denim jeans. In, in, <laughs> I may have been, but I All still right. don't know what DNM stands for. John would probably know, but John's not here. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, that's all right. I'm trying my best. I mean, you're doing a decent job, Sidney. Okay, that's very nice We'll of you. have a performance please, review later. Please don't be too flattering <laughs> with, your word, with your word choice. Four-man smoker. Oh. I mean, I'm not sure what Felder are intending with this. They kind of, I mean, I feel like your best angle into the fight is probably to blast the tusk, right? Because anyone else you go on, the tusk is going to snowball save in the, in the roar and in the rupture and just buy time. And you can't stand your ground and fight. You can't stand and deliver into this team. They're just way stronger in a static fight. So you kind of have to make it around poking and prodding and running around. Um, Giant has got eyes onto Solji here. Certainly does. Giant right, rushing and oh, him. Okay, well, that is the so, Tusk Killer we wanted, so that's a start. They, they got him. They roared for it. Here comes Speed, though. Speed's ruptured. He certainly is, but he'll just stand his ground anyway as they commit the overgrowth, but this is so messy. All right, they're just uninterested. Kits wasn't here from the start. This could have actually kind of got interesting, to be honest. With that free kill on the Tusk, the rupture out on the Dragon Knight, if Kits is there laying into them and they get their thirst running and they pop BKB and they run in, they might have actually been able to get a couple there. But, yeah, the cohesion wasn't quite there. Moose ended up dropping low as well. He would have needed a slight chain to just die off, and that could have been a, a little bit of a snowballing fight on the way back for Felt, but... Yeah, didn't work out. Didn't have the numbers. Red's out here looking for trees. He finds a lot of trees, but not the hero, which no. he wanted to find with his freshly picked up wonderful Shiva's guard. Yeah, five rat. I mean, they're still just incomplete. Is it? Is there a point in the game where you feel like felt are gonna turn this one? Like, what do they need to turn this? Disconnect, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fade. I mean, is there a point? Yes, it is. <clears throat> That's what I'm saying about Bloodseeker as a hero. You can always find that one snowbally fight where Bloodseeker just pops off. Uh, but it. It's going to come from the Ember. It's going to come from the enemy team making a mistake. You find one or two picks in the fight to build it up, and then the, the Bloodseeker cleans house, right? You get a full team wipe where the Bloodseeker just runs from one target to the next. That's the only real path I see. I don't think there's any split pushing that wins this. I don't think you're going to sneak Roche with this lineup. So it's pretty straightforward, right? You're the Radiant team. You kind of know what you have to do. You know it's mega hard, but at the very least, there's only one path. So you should be able to identify that that's what it takes. The hard part about that path is not only doing it, it's also identifying what's the best way inside that path, right? Is it going on the tusk first? Is it trying to blast the hoodwink? Who do you rupture? Uh, how do you deal with the sniper? You know, there's like a lot of questions, but the fact that it's the only real way to come back makes it, it makes it easier to communicate about it, right? You can start planning out your fight a little bit because there's not, there's not a lot of variety or surprising elements to this at this point, right? There's, uh, there's just you. 
a ball of five enemy heroes and how you're going to approach that one fight. And I would say giving up Roche is going to make it significantly harder. It certainly will. I, uh, I don't think they've got, you know, any idea Roche aren't happening. And even if they do, chances are they're not really feeling like they can uh, they can counter this play. I mean, the thing is, this is actually a good arena for them to fight in because the enemy team has already taken chip damage from Roche. So Bloodseeker has a little bit of a head start. This is where you could find an overgrowth with Blink. It's where Rubik could scout them with shards, but they don't have resources. Ember is out of mana, he goes back to base, and Bloodseeker is nowhere to be found. So they kind of just gave it up. But I actually think this was their best chance, was this one. Um, now they need to do the same thing, but against a team with Aegis and Shard. Who did they give the Shard to? I guess... This was Roche number two, right? Yeah. And I believe it was DNM they gave the Shards over to. Oh yeah, he has Concussive Grenade now. Yeah. Bottom lane, there, there is a bit of a push going on. Yeah, I, again, I, I don't think this like splitting the map is likely to work because Five Right can just choose not to give them this fight at that location, and they can just force in top and mid all the time, and then just start hitting the high ground, and the enemy team has to come back. Um, but it does look like Felt's approach overall right now is just stalling. Um, yeah, and there you go. Fire Rat don't care. They're just going mid. So they're going to force them back here. Death Prophet XO, Dragon Knight form. Straight into that Meteor Hammer. There is a Glyph. So two Glyphs, effectively. Are they going to try to base race this with Beastmaster bottom? It looks like. Okay, I mean, kind of interesting, but I feel like the Dire is just going to be faster at this game. Uh, and they could send home one hero to deal with Beast if they want to, just to delay him up. Yeah. Or maybe they just combine and get this lane of barracks and then TP home. Yeah, so they're going to send back Giant to start dealing with Fade. They're bringing back more. Okay, DP as well. So, I mean, effectively, they did get the barracks now, but they will get the kill on the Beastmaster probably. Uh, Fade's trying to go for a run, but chances are he will not make it out. No, nah, he's not going to make this. So they end up killing him. They get him kill, getting the kill on Rubik mid. Moose is met very low. He will die. He will. Hidden Mune pops his BKB. Okay. DNM actually out of position right now. He's just going to try and man up yes, here against the Bloodseeker. Like, they just can't touch this guy. No. No, oh they my. can not. He, That was not even remotely close. Like, they got him to, like, 70%, and he still had Satanic and Aegis. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, that was just, that was just a damage. little bit hopeless. You Emotional know? damage syndrome. Yep. Oh, well, 8 to 24 now. I mean, Five Rat having a fantastic game. Keep in mind, this is going to be arguably, if it does happen, the first series they've actually won. That is true. And very crucial for their chances of avoiding relegation. Because Correct. with this and one more win, they probably more or less guarantee themselves a tie at least to stay in Div 1. Uh, is it mathematically possible that two wins guarantee them? It isn't, right? No. Because, I mean... Are... No, right? Because every other... No, that is actually possible because Felt could end 1 and 6 and Wildcard could end 0 and 7. Right. It is possible. So actually, this is the beginning of their redemption arc to not even have to play ties. Speed. Catching up. Jumping in. Okay. Yeah. Right to work. Who did they rupture? The Death Prophet. Okay. Nice snowball dodge on the... Honestly, Blood every right. rupture I hear, it just feels like it doesn't even matter. Because it's like, if you can't get through DNM, it's like, well, what does a rupture matter? Okay, take a moment Take a moment to appreciate that sniper's frontline. <laughs> yeah, he he's does. literally standing in the enemy base. He's in the trenches. He, he's actually he's just going to kill him? <laughs> All right, well, he popped the Satanic already, so he can't Satanic off the overgrowth. Oh, but they but really I mean, can't that's kill him. That's what DNM's fine. He is so big. Uh, maybe he loses his life. He's used yeah, to say that's tank. Aegis. There you go. Okay. That's a start. Oh, well, that's the Meteor Hammer. Okay. I mean... Oh? I, I think he can fight them here. I yeah. don't think this is a problem. Yeah, Speed just jumps in. Stun is there. It was not a problem. It certainly was not. Hidden Mute is gone. Satanic is ready. DNM. Yeah, he'll pop it eventually, I'm sure. His kids are still trying. Almost there, but not quite. Satanic. Okay, Satanic he might is going actually to work. Dying here. Hit immune, still trying. Miss, miss, DNM miss. is still going down. Finally does enough dropping. It is possible, ladies and gentlemen, to kill off this sniper. In fact, they're even going to find speed. There is that Bloodseeker factor, baby. 
He gets that one fight where he gets to clean house one at a time. And honestly, that that was like a 6K gold swing. It, it ain't over. It actually is not over. If they pull that off one more time, this game is even. I'm not even kidding. What? Yeah. If they get one more team fight win like that, that would pretty much equal it. Because Bloodseeker in this game can reach a point of critical mass where he's so strong that he can just run at the sniper. And if his teammates can follow through like the Ember, one thing that Dyer has, they have one save from the Tusk, but it's not going to be enough if they just pile everything onto Sniper. And if he does die in these fights, then all of a sudden there's an open door to just chasing collaterals, right? Now, speaking of that, they might... I don't know who's finding who here. All right, well... Kids goes down. Yeah. Are they going to get more? No, oh, no, no, it wasn't Kids. In fact, it was Albino Zebra, excuse me. Yep. Top tower claimed. Beastmaster's going to get this. So this opens up for the outpost. Well, they already took bottom two, too, actually, so... Okay. Oh, a bit All more right. progress there. Beastmaster, is anything big coming for him? I think he has BKB. Yep, that's completed, so he can get in there. Triple bounty rune. That's another thousand gold. Things are happening. How much gold is that? That's like... 1,300. Oh! Make it another one. Yep. All right, so that was basically another, like, get them getting all of those runes instead of Fire Rat is another, like, 3k gold swing because it's one team got 1,500 and the other one didn't, and they were the ones with the map control. So, you know. I mean, don't call it a comeback, but <laughs> it is not out of the question. It is actually not. I, I can't... I'll be, I'll be bluntly honest about this. I cannot believe that this is a possibility right now. I thought... I wrote this game off... 15 minutes ago. Yeah, maybe I mean, 20. I was like, there is no way in hell. It's a 21% chance. It it very well could happen. And all it takes now is one slip up. And we have the access to all the information and we see the graphs and whatnot in the game state. The, there's always the human factor. Like, these players don't know the exact game state the way that we do and the way that we see. So, what's their mentality? It's like, oh man, we just got team wiped, you know? Like, uh, how far ahead are we now? You know, are we changing our strategy? Are we waiting for Roche? Like, where are we going to go on the map? Next, next, next. And if you're the Radiant, you're just like, hell yeah, we get to play. You know, <laughs> we, we, we've, been, we've barely been able to play our lineup this game, and now suddenly something good happened. So it's uh, refreshing for them. They're reinvigorated in this game. There's like, there's a bit of, uh, there's a, bit of a light in their eyes, you know? Kit switched on his camera. He did. He's a happy boy now. Hidden Mune has been spotted. I don't know about his refresher, though. I feel like, dude, that, that cannot be the item right here. You can barely even use your spells with it. He doesn't have the mana pool for it. I don't know why he's queuing up refresh. I think get some good stats here. Get some, like, Scotty or Butterfly or whatever. Just run in there and maul people. Surely it's not a refresher game. Yet. It's if you have Scotty, you have the mana. That's the other thing. Like, then you can very reliably use your spells. Oh, he's cued it. We'll see if he goes all the way with it. Yeah. He might need to defend, though, because Bottom Rax is under siege once again. And living armor. That's about all they can do, though. Are they just, they're just giving it up? Okay. Is there a key item timing that they're waiting for? Albino, mid lane. Gonna get caught. There'll be a roar out here from our Beastmaster, but Fade just needs to get the hell out of there now. They will eventually just land the sharpshooter onto our Bino Zebra, and DNM is just casually doing it by himself, Bot Rax. Do they just go for the Megas? I, I'm just trying to wrap my head around what's the play call here is from the Radiance. It's like, we can't fight them for this Rax, which, if that's the call, it's fine, but like, what are you waiting for? Like, what's the key item that is gonna make this worth it that you were delaying? Is that the Bloodseeker Refresher? I mean, I get you get two BKBs, right? But I don't know. Is that really... Maybe that maybe that is a bigger deal than I'm making it out to be. Maybe that is the, the best item here. It could be. Oh, no, his curse spotted. I think. No, did Red not see it? He didn't see it. Oh. And now, maybe now they see it. They oh, saw it. Oh, oh no. Oh. oh. Well, they're going to hunt this one down. I think Dragon Knight should... No? Okay. This is actually very important that this courier stays alive. It's a refresher orb, and the fight will be coming to you before that courier would have respawned. So fortunately for him, they do get to keep it alive. And they're going to smoke and contest this Roche. This is the moment. This could definitely happen. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Thunderdome. <laughs> oh, no, Fade! 
Uh, uh, he's blinked in. He was the... ready for the Thunderdome. <laughs> he he was there. ready. They don't know, though. They don't know he did it. No, they don't. In fact, Dude, Roshan started. But they don't have vision there. Oh, no. Are they actually just going to steal it? No. No way. I mean, they, they yeah. look like they might get away with this. Roshan's going down. Nobody's jumped back in the pit. Oh. And suddenly felt have got the Roshan. Ags, Cheese, and Aegis, the way of Team Felt. They will lose our Bino Zebra. BKB refreshed. Tidemune's all right. That's really good. That had... Was that Refresher Shard or Eggs on that one? Uh, Eggs, I believe. You got the Eggs now on Kids. Oh, why didn't they give it to Bloodseeker? What? <laughs> uh, uh, don't even scroll over, uh, Mr. Observer. We don't, we don't need to see what Blood Mist does. Uh, why didn't Thank they give you. it to Beastmaster? Yeah. All right. Well, top lane. It's time. DNM is laying into this. And keep in mind, Bloodseeker does not have any of his BKBs. He used the Refresher to get out alive. But he has the Aegis. So effectively can throw a life away to set up his teammates for success. Kits with the Kaya Sanj as well as Cheese could go in here. But you, you can't just let them take the Megas, though. Oh, that's a good spell steal from Rubik. He has the Shrapnel. He does. Jump in. Kits. He's OK. Lift up. Throw get him back. out of there. Yep. I mean, this is still very dire favorite, considered that they got the second lane of barracks for free, but that Roshan snag once again keeps hopes alive for Felt. It does. My Rapun is frontlining currently. What's down? That'll be D Ward. No, it was all obeyed. The Hex is there. Hit immune. He gets lifted away, though. Solji will save. So they still go for more. Kits is doing really good damage. He this certainly is. going to be fast when he comes up. He's right in the back, trying to get it out, TNM. Very, uh, very low uh, now. He's going to pop the Satanic. Kits has gone a bit too far. Kits is gone. Kits pressed every hotkey on his keyboard. He literally just threw everything around. <laughs> and then he ran out. He had no more buttons left. I hit him mute. Here he comes, Rupture. though. Yep. All right, he's running right at TNM. He's, he's toast. Yeah, you know? DNM's gone. Yep, next. All righty. We've got ourselves a game. The bash is there. Speed. Oh, nice save from Moose. Oh, speed is gone. Moose. I mean, don't call it a comeback, but... I mean, it's coming. It's... It's I, happening. So, in all fairness, kids had to buy back there and they expended their Aegis, but they survived. They get quite a lot of gold out of that exchange overall. What is happening? And... I'm looking at, okay, so Beastmaster has now completed Octarine Core, and he has a Timeless Relic in the backpack, so he's a lot stronger. I guess that Relic will go on to Kits. We've got, what, do we, what else do we have coming out? So, Ember, 2k gold, curious what he's going to buy, and we're eyeing up a Lincolns now on the Bloodseeker. This is, yep, this oh. is quiet. Where? This is insane. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, still, it's still a dire game to lose, but... You got to be a little bit cautious as DNM at this point. Like, he was invincible, and now he's showing some weakness. Once they get on top of him, and Ember is... Oh, Giant. Also getting caught out here. That's a free is one. Going to go down. That's a free kill. And that's a mid-tier two. So another 3k gold swing here between that kill and the bounty and the tower. Are they... Yo. They're, they're actually... going high ground. They are hitting the enemy base. They are going to try for this team. I mean, I can't believe it. If they actually <laughs> make a back. comeback. <laughs> They're going to try for this. Oh, get back. Uh, they tried for a good half second. They they, they did good. Yeah. The well, fact that they're still in the game is, is really good. Yeah. You don't say. And the panelists, they were not they were not felt believers except Nomad, who was very convinced. Oh, absolutely. He was like, you guys don't think felt is going to win? I am positive when the others said this is a 5 red four step game. Which is us. saying something, considering he was constipated. You know, just having that much faith. Yeah, I, I've heard it, like, you, it unlocks parts of your brain that aren't available otherwise. I see. Did you know we only use 99% of our brain? What, are, what if we use the other 1%? Constipation. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's when you unlock that last percent, and that is the one where you truly transcend. Mid lane, five rat. They're going to smoke up. Now, this is dangerous territory, right? Because if you yep. lose this team fight. Oh, Rubik also has Octarine Core. He does. All right. Well, 
Bloodseekers close to that. Lincolns. Oh, does Ember buy anything? Telescope. Yum. I feel I feel like this game is kind of dead even, honestly. And it isn't in reality because there's a two racks advantage, but it's on such a knife's edge. If dire team dies, how many buybacks do they even have? They have sniper and DK, I think. Here we go. Does Tusk have buyback? He does. Okay, so three buybacks. Keep in mind, no Aegis up this time though. So if Hidden Mune gets caught out. Yep. He does have buyback. There's your Hex out. They've caught the Bloodseeker the first time. Bane's going to jump in to try and help out. There is a lift up, but the Bloodseeker still in trouble. He's going to die. We'll have buyback available, but may need to commit an ASAP. Giant is going to die. There's your buyback. He wants to take this fight Bloodseeker now. Bloodseeker still has lingering move speed from that kill. He's really, really fast. That's a dead DK. Yeah, speed's gone. Uh, in for more DNM. He'll be able to TP out. The rupture will do nothing. Moose also just finding the tree line. Do I say that? He gets out of the tree line, but nevertheless, he is okay to TP up. That was a that was a really big buyback though. Uh, Aegis is not available until in two minutes at the very earliest. So one more kill on Hit Immune is game over. They have a very clear path to victory now for five rat. Kill off this Bloodseeker once and you're done. Probably. Looks like Felt just want to take it to him. They're going to smoke up the Beastmaster as Roar ready again. With that Octarine core, this is a 40 second cooldown. Pretty nutty. Octarine plus Spell Prism. They have to be a little bit careful not to get overzealous here because if they jump in the enemy base and buybacks are available, they have no access to that information. We obviously know they have these. They try to jump them in the enemy base and Bloodseeker dies. They just throw the game away. So this is a very delicate moment. Albino Zebra has placed wards here, and they do see them with their sentry. Sniper's gonna try oh, to deal Roar with it. Oh, is there. DNM. He gets caught out. Kit. Kit has got the chain. Oh, shit. DNM. DNM's on the Temple Tower. Satanic Pop. Is it enough? Kit is trying, but he can't get the damage. Oh, he can. Oh, he gets the damage. But he's, he's got buyback. No way he's getting out, He's too. got buyback available. Refresh. Can get out of here? He refreshes everything, but he's got no mana. He's got no mana. He oh, gets lifted away. up. He's all right. The oh, bushwhack! Oh, no! Dude, uh, holy shit, the saving grace here for Five Red is that DNM is cold as ice and didn't buy back there. Whew. There's a lot of players in the world that buy back there on that sniper, but he held it, and I think that could become crucial for their chances of staying in this game. Because now that is not a guaranteed fight win for the Radiant, killing off that sniper later down the line. Roche spawn. 30 seconds at the earliest. What a game. I I still, I am still dumbfounded by the fact that this got to this point. That is to actually, this it's actually ridiculous. 39% right now. Yep. Ooh. And given the momentum, it doesn't feel like it's 39, right? Like you've no. got to think about it from Five Rat's position as well. Like the way these fights have been going, they might feel like the game is in a worse state than it actually really is and start making wrong plans for their next move. It, to keep it simple, what they still need to do is they need to protect their sniper and they need to get the jump first. A lot of the time in the last like 10 minutes, Felt have really been the ones leading the charge with Kits just going berserk. Here we go. Oh, Fade. Who can he find with this roar? Nobody around. I wonder if Fade has impressed Fear this game. He had a hard lane this time, but he's actually had a pretty major impact on the Beastmaster this time around, in my opinion. I uh, highly doubt it. The yeah. Fade's never, Fear's never impressed. That's true. Oh, it's up a in mega early spawn. It is. Oh, they're going to get it right now. Gaben's blessing. Yeah. Also known as Aghanim's blessing. Very true. And the shard. Okay, well, who, what do you put on who? So, Ags goes to... Rube. Even Drums of Slom aren't... Isn't that bad? Don't say that, Cinder. I mean, he's going to have to, right? Double You're not putting in a BS. So it's that, it's Drums of Slom, it's Eyes in the Forest, or it's Rubik's Axe, right? So... It like, has to be Rubik's Axe. Albino? Really? They gave it to... They're doing Eyes? Okay. Ah, he's holding it. He hasn't used it yet. There we go. No, wait, who did he give it to? He gave it to the Rubik's Oh, he gave it to Rubik's Makes okay. sense, makes sense. I mean, fair enough. So now two spell steals and extra cast range. So what does he want to have with Ag's upgrade? What's a really good spell to steal? Hmm. What happens if you steal Sharpshooter? Do you I actually do two of them? Sharpshooter seems like... You get the decoy ability, right? 
on Rubik. That's ridiculous damage. Yeah, that's true. And it gives you another break against the Dragon Knight. I think, I think Sharpshooter would be sick. I think... I guess even Assassin. I mean, he's not going to steal Assassinate, though, right? Roar out. Okay, hang on. They've got speed. Speed oh is gosh. melting. Insta dead. Holy. And giant. Oh, DNF. No. Oh. oh. I thought he had changed. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> giant. Shit, he could have refreshed chained him, I think. Giant gets low ground. But he's in big trouble. Giant's gone. Moose. Moose is not. Has he been spotted? The pings are out. They know he's in the tree line somewhere. Moose. Don't break. Oh, oh they found him. him. Moose, he'll try to buy a bit of time, but he is certainly dead. All right, three down for the side of Vibrat, one without buyback. Trees can be ferocious. I mean, something special might happen this game three. It already has, quite frankly. Yeah, I mean, at this point, this is a Radiant favorite game. All the momentum is theirs. They keep finding the jumps every single time with the Beastmaster Hawks. They just get in there, get the job done, and... The crazy thing about all <gasps> this, Bloodseeker doesn't even have a damage item yet. Look at that really. plus. It's gonna... Yep, that, there you go. 62%. It's approaching Mount Everest. This is quite the steep slope. You can't bike up this. No. You, can, you can't hike up it either. You certainly can't. You need uh This is like a, a climbing exercise, I think. This is a real mountain right there. It certainly was. Okay. Uh, glyph number one. They have two glyphs here. Oh, it's so important for Fire Rat to pull off this win. It really is. We were talking about it from Fire Rat's perspective, but it's also important for Feld, right? This is kind of a game that will more or less guarantee them staying in Div 1, because they would have a 2-2 two -two score, or 2-3, I believe. Uh, but it will push Fire Rat Force Staff down to, I believe, an 0-4. Or 0-5, and same as Wildcard who are also currently winless. Here we go. Jump in, speed. He's going to try. Instant They've got the Ember. Sniper. Kits is fine. Fade in the meantime in the backside. He's got DNM. DNM pops his BKB, trying to survive through it, but Hit Immune's there in the overgrowth. It's going to lock him down, but hold on a minute. They've got the Blood Ticket. Hit Immune still healing through it. He's going to survive. Oh, DNM somehow alive through all this. Kits on a triple, though. Fade, oh, he's in again for the second roll. They've got him. DNM's down, but he'll buy back. Speed, he's in with the stun. Kids held down. Bushwhack is there. Can they lock him down long enough? Kids trying to remnant away. Can't do it. But he's got buyback. He's all right. This might actually delay the game. He he played super aggressively there and got punished in a mega long chain stun. Otherwise, okay. They're oh, gonna, here we go. They're gonna roar buyback. They've got another one. Roars out. Chains are out. Speed locked down. Speed. He might just die back here, but they'll go after DNM instead. That's over. That's gonna be it. Oh my god. Phil have they done it. Won this game. Oh, they have done it. I can't believe it. I can't uh. believe it. And somewhere in the green room, Fear is sick right now, knowing Fade <laughs> just won the game for Phil. The DX is the call. I. Okay. That's I... a backwards XD syndrome, in yeah. case you want to wear. I was not expecting. I was not expecting the last game of the day to be one of this kind. Like, there's, oh. there's just so many things about this game. Like the way they end up winning it, the fact that this gets close, the way they win the fights, the.